This video is reviewing the sensory receptors in the body as they relate to proprioception. To begin with, we first need to define what proprioception is. So proprioception um, has been defined as essentially our sense of position, posture, and motion. We take this information from peripheral receptors, also called sensory or mechanoreceptors. And that information is projected along afferent nerves or sensory nerves until it reaches the um, CNS being the spinal cord and the brain. So at that point in time it's processed and then we can have a motor output from it. We're going to focus specifically on the different types of receptors and how they relate to um, proprioception today and then we will have another video that discusses the motor outputs. We have several different kinds of mechanoreceptors and sensory receptors, but the thing that they all have in common is the transmission of uh, their information along those afferent nerves to the central nervous system where it will be processed and a response will be generated. We're just going to focus on the um, afferent portion of that today. Again, we'll have another video later um, on the response portion. These proprioceptors, um, being sensory receptors and mechanoreceptors, are responsible for our reflexive responses. So the stretch reflex, um, specifically, is also responsible for creating programmed voluntary responses to certain stimuli, uses our previous experiences to generate those responses. It integrates the information that it gets and it creates our feedback and our feed forward um, automatic responses or our writing responses. Um, and things like that. We'll discuss feedback and feed forward here in, in just a minute. And then they're also responsible for, again, interpreting the information that they're getting to help with standing, balance, walking, um, and those sorts of activities. Within a joint, we have four primary types of mechanoreceptors, and we call these articular mechanoreceptors. Again, specific to the joint. We also see some of these receptors in the skin, um, and we'll visit those here again in just a second. When we look at these, we classify them both by name and by type. Again, we have four key types. Type one is called Ruffini. And these are um, receptors that are located in the most superficial, superficial excuse me, layer of the capsule. These respond um, specifically to stretch. When we talk about getting to the limits of rotation and when the outer edge of that capsule gets stretched, that's when these typically tend to respond. They're fairly low threshold and they're slow adapting. Um, and we see responses to these mechanoreceptors both statically and dynamically. Type two is our piscineform. And these are located in the deeper layers of the capsule, and we also see these within our articular fat pads. So if we're um, discussing the knee specifically, we would see it in that prepatellar fat pad. And these respond primarily to compression. Um, they're fairly dynamic in nature. Again, they're very low threshold, and these react a lot more quickly uh, than our type 1 did. Type 3 is our Golgi tendon organ. And these are located um, specifically within the tendons and the ligaments that surround joints. If we're talking just about the joint complex, we would be speaking about the ligament. These respond only to active tension. Again, um, these are dynamic in nature. They are very high threshold, so that means that we require quite a bit of stretch before they're activated, and they're very slow adapting, um, just like we saw with our type 1. And then type 4 is our free nerve endings. These are located through the fibrous portion of the capsule, as well as through the fat pad, similar to our type 2. These are um, very responsible, or very receptive, sorry, to pain and inflammation. They are primarily nociceptors. Um, they're fairly high threshold and they do not adapt, so they essentially are going to respond to the same stimuli every time uh, that they are exposed to it. Again, these are just the articular mechanoreceptors, so they're located within the joint complex, and we'll see some of these in the skin as well. But these are responsible for um, transmitting afferent information about um, what position a joint is in, if it's in a rotated position or if we have torsion on, on the joint or on the joint capsule, if we are weight-bearing, if we are open chain or closed chain, um, 
what point at the range of motion we're at. So again, this is all information that is very specific to the joint, what position the joint is in, if it's loaded or unloaded, basically meaning the amount of compression, um, as well as if there's pain. So the receptors in the skin, um, similar again to the joint capsule, we have different receptors that pick up different types of stimuli or information and transmit that to the body. So the first one being our Meisner's corpuscles. These are located in the skin, um, as we mentioned, along with the others. And this responds really well to touch and pressure. Um, it's a very dynamic receptor, meaning that it requires some movement to respond. It adapts very, very quickly, and it has a low um, threshold activation. So uh, the longer pressure remains on the skin, the more it's going to adapt, but it's very easily stimulated. Pacinian corpuscles are located in subcutaneous tissue, as well as interosseous membranes. and then the viscera. And this is something that responds to deep pressure as well as vibration. It's another dynamic receptor and it's very slow adapting. So the Meisner we saw adapted very quickly to um, touch and pressure, while the Piscinian corpuscles take a little bit more time. They also have a low activation threshold. Ruffinis we also saw in the joint, and again, just like we saw with the joint, um, these are encapsulated meaning that they're in the joint capsule. Um, and we see a response to stretch here specifically. It's very slow adapting, just like we saw um, with our piscinian, sorry. Um, and it also has a low activation threshold, again, responding just to, to stretch. Merkel's discs are located in uh, most skin as well as in hair follicles, meaning that it's fairly close to the surface. Like with our Meisner's corpuscles, these respond to touch and pressure. They're also slow adapting with a low threshold, just like all of the others that we've seen at this point in time. Our free nerve endings, just like we saw in uh, the joint, are located in all skin, and these respond to um, pain, so they're a nociceptor, as well as temperature and pressure. They're slow adapting, just like we saw in the joint. These ones have a high activation threshold, uh, more so than all of the other receptors that we see in the skin. So these receptors work alongside the receptors in the joint to help us determine body position as well as joint position and they use different types of feelings in the skin. So for example, as we're going through knee extension, the skin on the back of the knee would be stretched and we would see responses from Ruffini's corpuscles um, along with the Golgi tendon organs that were in the joint as they're being stretched. These receptors also allow us to gain some perspective on um, surfaces that we're contacting and what kind of environment we're on. So for example, if we're standing on one foot on the ground, we are seeing um, activation of those free nerve endings, our Meisner's corpuscles, as well as Piscinian um, and Merkel's because we have pressure on the bottom of the foot. We may see some activation uh, from Ruffini's corpuscles. We may have stretching of the skin over the plantar fascia. And these are all things that are contributing to our body's kind of understanding and comprehension of where we're at in space and what position we're in. Within the muscle, we have two different kinds of receptors. We have the muscle spindle, and then we have the Golgi tendon organ, um, just like we saw with our uh, joint receptors as well as our skin receptors. So muscle spindles have two different kinds of fibers. We have our intrafusal fibers and then our extrafusal fibers. Our intrafusal fibers are located within the muscle. And then our extrafusal fibers run parallel to uh, the muscle fibers. They're located kind of on the outside of, of that muscle. So this complex both changes in length and the rate of change in length. So this deals with um, basically being stretched. So it deals with the amount of stretch as well as the time taken to um, stretch that particular muscle. So this is really important information um, for both body position as well as joint position, and then determining what responses our body needs to make um, to essentially put itself in the correct position or um, go through a writing response. So what we're going to do on the next uh, portion here is go through that stretch reflex again um, and, and look at how the Golgi tendon organ becomes involved in that process as well. 
So again, the muscle spindle complex is responding to stretch. So if we have a muscle, so the fibers running this way, and then within the tendon of that muscle, we would have our Golgi tendon organ. So when a stretch is applied to that muscle, typically um, with that stretch, we're talking about a quick stretch, um, one that occurs rapidly. So we apply that quick stretch, and that results in the activation of the muscle spindles. Again, they respond to both stretch and rate of stretch. So a slower stretch isn't as likely to activate the spindles. So we have that activation, and that is going to send an impulse to the spinal cord. Okay, where it is processed, again, it's only going to the spinal cord because this is a reflex. So it's processed in the spinal cord, and then it's going to come back out to the muscle and cause a concentric contraction. Now the Golgi tendon organ has what's called an inhibitory response. While the muscle spindle um, is excitatory, the Golgi tendon is inhibitory. So when we have the concentric contraction of the muscle, what we see there is tension applied to the Golgi tendon organ as a result of the muscle contraction. So we have our muscle again. And our muscles again are um, extensible <clears throat> and we don't see that as much um, in our tendon. So when we have that concentric contraction of the muscle, it's also causing tension on that Golgi, te Golgi tendon organ. Um, the tension that's applied there is going to activate that Golgi tendon organ. Same thing, it's going to come up to the spinal cord to an afferent impulse. It's going to leave the spinal cord and come back to the muscle and cause relaxation. So it creates this loop. So we have the quick stretch that activates the muscle spindles, again, which respond to rapid stretch. Um, that afferent, implant, afferent impulse goes to the spinal cord, which causes a concentric contraction of that same muscle. That contraction applies tension, tension to the Golgi tendon organ, which activates that Golgi tendon organ, sends the afferent impulse to the spinal cord, and causes relaxation of the muscle. Again, that's an inhibitory response that's generated by that Golgi tendon organ. So our bodies take all of this information that's coming from the joints, the skin, the muscles and tendons, as well as some input from our organs. And it looks at all of this afferent information, and then it also looks at the task at hand and essentially what it needs to accomplish, and then the environment that it is in. It takes all of this information and it self-organizes. or determines the most appropriate response for um, it to take to accomplish whatever that task is. When that self-organization process occurs, we have two different um, kind of systems that we can use. We have a feedback system, and we have a feed forward. Feedback is using our previous experiences essentially to determine how we're going to respond. And then the feed forward system, after the task has already begun, uh, makes alterations to the movement or to um, the activation or whatever the body has decided to do based on the sensory input that it's receiving. We have a couple areas of the body that are uh, really important and highly sensitive as far as proprioception goes. So the first one being the cervical spine. The articular mechanoreceptors that are located in the facet joints in the spine are very sensitive, um, as well as the deep flexors and the extensors of the neck also respond very nicely to stretch. So we have a lot of proprioceptive information that we can gain from the cervical spine. The next place is the thoracolumbar fascia. So this is a really um, large body of fascia. It has several layers, and it's attached essentially from uh, the muscles of the upper extremity and the back to the muscles of the lower extremity coming down through the glute. We see a lot of information that's related to stretch, so the Golgi tendon organs that are located here, 
um, provide us with a lot of information about body position as well. Closely correlated to this, the SI joints also provide a great deal of information. The articular mechanoreceptors here are very sensitive and provide us a lot of information about the position of our lower extremity in, in relation to um, our trunk and our core. And then the last place is the soles of the feet. So the bottoms of the feet, again, are usually our weight-bearing position. So we have a lot of pressure receptors here, um, like we discussed in the skin, that provide us with a lot of information about the position of our feet, um, as well as the position of our body in relation to the environment that we're in. So again, our body takes all of this information coming from all of the different mechanoreceptors, and it looks at um, the amount of compression on structures. It looks at stretch on muscles and skin. It looks at temperature. Um, we also look at pain. We look at body position. And we look at movement or tasks. And all of this organizes um, and kind of combines in according to, again, our previous experiences from feedback and creates a motor response. So the motor response is something that we will be talking about in uh, the next few class periods. But these things, again, all of these receptors are really important to both our balance and our neuromuscular control, telling our body where it's at in space and how it needs to respond to certain stimuli.